We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. And give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, I would like to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 24. I'm going to begin with verse number 2. So thankful for everyone that is here, all of our guests. Amen. Genesis 24, beginning with verse number 2. Believing that God wants to help us today. Is there anybody that's come with a desire to be blessed of God? Amen. Has anybody come to bless God today? Amen. Genesis 24, verse 2, the Bible says, And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Now you understand you don't just do that to anybody. All right? So he's about to do something sacred. In fact, he's about to make a covenant or have him make a covenant with Abraham. And he says, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of Canaanites among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So Abraham is commissioning this servant to get a wife for his son. Verse 10, this servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose and went into Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day. And show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. Everybody say, I may drink. That I may drink. She shall say, Drink. And I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Amen. I want to preach on this subject today, and I will move quickly. But I want to preach on this subject, the drink test. The drink test. Amen. Sometimes God, I think maybe more often than we know, likes to put us to a test. There's various proving moments. And as my dad likes to say, not all moments are created equal. There are times when God kind of steps up. He doesn't warn us in advance usually either, but he puts us to test. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to pass those tests. I want to pass them with a flying color. I'm not looking for D's, certainly. I'm not looking for C's. I don't even want to be. I want an A on every test. That God puts my way. Amen. Let's pray together and ask that God would bless these next few minutes. Jesus, thank you for your presence. Your spirit is here. It's been all morning long. God, it was here yesterday in prayer. In fact, it's been here all week long. We ask that you would continue to move right now. Let the glory of God move across this place from front to back. Help us to awaken to the moment. Help us, God, to wake up to the fact you're here to do something beautiful. You're here to help somebody. You're here to touch somebody. You're here to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. You're here to bring somebody back into your kingdom. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Genesis chapter 24 is a portion of the word of the Lord in the life of Abraham towards the end of his life. The Bible says not just that he was old, but he was, and I love this Bible terminology, he was well stricken in age. 
or well advanced in age. And when you get to when you get to this point in life, I'm not there yet, but I can see that point from here. You get to the point that you begin to think about things that matter. Abraham, in this particular uh, point of his life, is, was especially concerned about his son. He had just mar- buried, his, uh, buried his wife, Sarah, and buried Isaac's mother. And the Bible lets us know that Abraham wanted to make sure that Isaac was married and, 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 and taken care of in, that, uh, in, in, in marriage. And so he doesn't want to leave anything to chance. He has an old servant. In fact, it's his oldest servant. It's a trusted servant that he calls, and he says, I have a special uh, job for you, a special assignment. And to add solemnity to the occasion to get Eliezer, the eldest servant, to realize how sacred this is, he, he asks him to put his hand under his thigh. It was a Middle Eastern sign of a covenant, a sacred covenant that was about to be made. And Abraham tells Eliezer, this oldest servant, that uh, I need you to go and I want you to get a wife for my son. But it matters where you get her. I want you to get her uh, from, I I want you to get her from the family, from our family. Don't take her from the daughters of the Canaanites where we're at now but you're going to have to go on a journey, go back to my country, to my kindred, take a wife for my son, Isaac. And, and so Eliezer does. He, he's this eldest servant, rises up, gets everything together, prepares for this, this, this sacred assignment that he's been given by Abraham. And he goes and, and uh, heads back to the land of Abraham's nativity. And on his way, the Bible says that Eliezer, ahead of time, begins to pray, and he, he tells God, God, I, I need some help with this job. And I'm, I'm, I, what I want to do, if you will, is, is have, a, have a, a test, have a, some kind of a, a proving that as to who would be the wife for my, my, my master's son. And Eliezer, I don't know exactly how he came up with this, but he said, what I'm going to do, Lord, is when I get to the well, I'm going to, or when I get there, I'm going to go to the well. And I'm going to go where the, the, the people, the, the ladies would come. It was the tradition of the day, and they would get water from the well. And when they come, I'm going to, I'm going to look at one of them. Maybe he did this to several. But I'm going to look at her, and I'm going to ask her, if you would can I have a drink? I'm thirsty. I, I need a drink. And he said, the proof will be not that she just gets me something to drink, but that she waters all of my camels as well. And so, as you know, the story plays out. We'll talk more about it in a moment, but this is exactly the test, the drink test, if you will, that Eliezer puts uh, Isaac's future wife, Rebecca, through. It is a test about whether or not she would give him and the camels to drink. Now, I, I think we all know that it, there really is nothing like a cold drink on a hot day. And uh, there's just nothing more refreshing, nothing more satisfying when you've been working, when you've really been sweating. I mean, when you've really been putting out and to get a, 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 a cold drink of water. Some of you may remember doing something like this. I remember uh, we would be, as kids, we'd be playing. We'd be running all over the place. And uh, we would, I loved to go back to the house. And I didn't go inside when I was really thirsty. When I was really thirsty, I went right to the water hose. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you don't, you don't just put the water hose by your mouth. I would put it like in my mouth. And I didn't have somebody else turn the water on. I would turn it on for myself. And I'd get it a little bit going. And then once I had it, you know, I had that, the, the, the process going, the water rolling down my throat, I'd just crank that baby up. I'm, there's, I probably drank five gallons in about 15 seconds. But there was nothing like that satisfying moment, a cold drink on a hot day. And uh, I, I think it's significant that that's exactly the test that this servant put Rebecca through. 
In fact, it's kind of neat as I was reading and preparing for this. It's, it's interesting how many times this test, the drink test, happens over and over in Scripture. Over and over in Scripture, you'll have a scenario, important moments in the Bible where somebody will ask somebody else for a drink. And it, it, it has significance far beyond just them getting a drink of water. I'm kind of making myself thirsty, and luckily I have a bottle of water right here. One of them that I, I think of is found in 2 Samuel 23. The Bible says that King David was thirsty, and he had been running from Saul. He had been running from his enemies. In fact, there was a, a garrison of Philistines that was protecting this certain well, and uh, I'm sorry, he was not running for Saul at this particular point. It was the Philistines that were protecting the well, the well of Bethlehem. And David says, I just wish I could have a drink. He said, oh, that somebody would give me a drink of water. Everybody say a drink of water. A drink of water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. He asked for the drink of water. We read another time in 1 Kings 17 when the prophet comes to a widow of Zarephath, and the Bible says that she is put to the test. And the test begins with him saying, I wish you would bring me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Everybody say the drink test. One of the most famous examples of this is found in John 4 and 7. The Bible says that Jesus was weary with his journey and sat on the well. And there comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus saith unto her, looks at this strange woman that in the flesh he had never met before. His opening words, I've preached about it before, was not, how are you doing? Isn't the weather nice? Uh, his opening words to a person he had never met in his life was, give me to drink. Somebody say the drink test. Even in Calvary, the Bible says in John 19 and 28 that Jesus is hanging on the cross and in fulfillment of, I believe it was Psalm 69, he knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus saith, I thirst. It was the drink test. And then again in our text in Genesis 24, as a sign of this woman entering into the family of the faithful of Abraham, Ultimately, the most prominent genealogy the world would ever see, the genealogy of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ. It all began with a servant looking at a woman and saying, give me to drink. And I, I want to tell this church today, I, I believe that God puts us to test like this. In fact, I believe he's doing it here today. God likes us to bring him something to drink. It's a request for refreshment. It's a request for replenishment. And uh, if you will, the type here is of God asking somebody that they would give him this water, that, that they would give him to drink, that they would give him what he's, he desires. And, and if, I, if I could tell you that today, I, I still believe that God is looking for people that will give him something that he wants. And if there's one thing that God wants today, he's looking for somebody that knows how to lift their hands and lift their voice and on a Sunday morning, give him the praise that he deserves. In fact, I've come to tell you this Sunday morning, we've come for a drink test today. And God is saying, before I ever give you anything, I've got something I want to ask you. Before you ever hold up your cup and say, here's my cup, Lord, fill it up. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. That God himself is saying, I'm looking for somebody that will give me worship. That for somebody that would give me praise. I, I, I'm just telling you today, God's not ashamed to ask of us for worship. God's not embarrassed to say, I'm looking for somebody that would praise me. Over and over in the Bible, God would speak up and say, let me just tell you what I'm interested in. I'm looking for somebody that knows how to praise my name. We read in Psalms 107, verse number 8. I love Psalms 107. But verse number 8, the psalmist has been talking, and all of a sudden, it's like God taps him on the shoulder and says, I want you to add a little refrain to this beautiful psalm and say this. And so he begins to write, and he begins to express the desire desire of God. Now, did you notice it was God's desire that he expresses? God desires this. God says this. In verse number seven, excuse me, verse number eight, he says, oh, that men would praise the Lord. 
for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. I've come to tell you today that God is saying, I'm looking for somebody that would praise me for my goodness today. Amen. He continues in that psalm for a few more verses. Seven verses later in verse number 15, the psalmist says again, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. A few verses later in verse number 21, the same words are recorded. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Ten verses later in verse 31, God says, I don't think they're getting it yet. You need to say it one more time. They're still not quite getting it. Uh, Say it again. And so the psalmist writes, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, uh, he puts the drink test out and he says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, uh, for his wonderful works uh, to the children of men. And on this Sunday morning, I feel like God has come to put somebody to the test. Uh, God has stuck his cup out. God has come to say, I've been the 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 back end of, of, of profane jokes all week long. My name has been taken in vain all Sunday morning. Different people this morning have been making fun of the name of Jesus. But I've come to this church today and I have come with a desire in my heart and that is that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, hallelujah. I've just come to tell somebody uh, one of the main things we've come for today is to give God what he wants. Uh, Not get what I want. Uh, I've come to give him what he wants. Uh, Too often we start uh, by putting our hand out. Uh, Too often we start uh, by asking for our drink. Uh, Too often we say like the children of Israel in the wilderness, uh, give us uh, that we may drink. Uh, And God is saying, no, 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 no. I've come today and I'm thirsty. Uh, I've come today and I am hungry. Uh, I've come today and I'm looking for somebody that can get your eyes off your problems uh, for a little while and give me the drink and give me the praise and give me the glory. Oh, somebody ought to begin to praise him now. Has anybody come to give God some praise? Has anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus? Has anybody come to get your eyes off of an earthbound view and lift your eyes to the heavens and give the Lord some praise today? Oh, clap your hands and lift your voice and give God some praise. Amen, amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him Jesus is saying, give me to drink. Amen. And there's three answers this lady in Genesis 24 could have given. She could have said no. That's one answer. There's at least three answers. One could have been no, I ain't giving you nothing to drink. But she didn't do that. Is there anybody that's made up your mind? I've come to give him something today. Amen. The second answer she could have given was yes, Here's your cup. You asked for a drink, and I'm giving you a drink. But she didn't do that. But she did the third possibility, which was, I'm giving you a drink, but I'm going to water all of those camels you brought as well. I was reading about this. Camels, they drink a lot of water. They need to be watered about it. They they can go for days without drinking, but every 10 days, they got to drink a lot of water. And in those 40 days, if they're doing desert travel, they can lose 40% of their body weight and fat before they begin to really get thirsty. But a camel that hasn't drank in 10 days can consume 40 gallons of water in less than half an hour. And water weighs 8.3 pounds per gallon. That would mean one camel could drink 332 pounds of water. 10 camels, which is what she watered, could drink 3,320 pounds of water, carrying it one jar at a time. Oh, hallelujah. And she didn't say, I'm going to give you a little sip, Lord. I'm going to give you a little drink, Lord. But she said, I'm going to give you more more than you ask for over and above. I'm going to dump it out. I'm going to pour it out. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that there'd be somebody today that would pass the drink test, that would say on this Sunday morning, I've come to give him praise. 
I've come to clap my hands. I've come to lift my voice. I've come to give him praise. He's thirsty, and I'm going to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Is there anybody that said, I've come to give the Lord some praise today? Hallelujah. Amen. There, there's part of me, I, I doubt that she did all that watering by herself. I can't help but think this was a, a wealthy young lady come from a wealthy home. She probably had servants that helped her, that helped her do it. I don't know for sure one way or the other. All I know is she got people to get, uh, is that she ended up uh, watering all of those camels. Uh, but if she had to get people to help her, it didn't take away from the blessing one bit. Amen. And can I tell you, that's what the beauty of us coming together in God's house with one another. Amen. I'm thankful for worship where somebody praises God by themselves. There's something beautiful about praising God by your own self, lifting up your hands, lifting up your voice. But isn't there something nice about coming and worshiping God with one another? Oh, hallelujah. There's something beautiful about corporate praise. Psalm 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. And he, he talks about praising God. But in verse number 3, he steps it up a little bit and says, magnify the Lord with me. He's inviting others to praise God with him. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. There is, I, I, wouldn't it be beautiful if a bunch of us today would begin to link up and, and say, listen, he needs a lot of worship. He deserves a lot of praise. And I can only do so much on my own. I'm limited in and of, my, uh, in and of myself. But if I can get my brothers and sisters to begin to praise him with me, if I can begin to praise him with my brothers and sisters, if together we can magnify magnify the Lord. If together we can lift up his holy name, then I think we can begin to do what the psalmist said when he said, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Come on, I'm looking for somebody on a Sunday morning that, that'll get rid of your selfishness that says, I've come to church all about me. Church is all about my problem. It's all about my healing. It's all about my little issue. But I've come today to give God what he wants. I've come today to turn the focus back on God. I've come to to look to him. I've come to give him to drink. I've come to give him the praise. I've come to bless his name. Oh, I'm going to tell you, that's a test. Every time we come to the house of God, God is saying, give me to drink. God is saying, give me to drink. Oh, it's all about you. No, 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 no. It's not all about you. There's a God in heaven that created everything, and he deserves some worship today. You need to lift up your head, lift up your hands, shake off the pressure of the day, and lift up a praise and magnify God right now. Oh, come on, praise him right now. Come on, lift your voice and praise him right now. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There was a lot of a drink tests in the Bible. Amen. The Bible says that David, when he said, I wish I could get a drink from the well of Bethlehem. The Bible said there were some guys that heard him do that. And they, they had to break through the Philistines to get to the well. Do you hear me? They had to fight to get the king a drink. They said, I'm going to get him what he wants. I don't care what I got to go through. Whatever I got to break through, whatever I'm facing, come on, get out of my way. I'm going to get him a drink. Somebody needs to get a little bit determined about this. Sometimes we come to church and if praise doesn't just break out, it's kind of like, oh, well, the Philistines kept us from it. But there needs to be somebody that gets a Holy Ghost powerful desperation that says I'm going to praise him regardless of what I'm facing like that widow she was in a famine she had nothing to eat she had a little oil a little a little meal she was going to cook and she only had two sticks to start a fire everything about that's pitiful what a terrible time for God to tell the prophet to ask for a drink but the Bible says she gave it to him anyway. We need to give to God regardless of how broke we are. We need to worship God regardless of how depressed we are. You need to worship God regardless of how preoccupied you are. Somebody needs to give God praise. Listen, honey, this ain't all about me and it ain't all about you. But it's about him. 
it's about him. That lady at the well in John 4, when Jesus said, give me to drink, she had a million excuses. She said, you're a Jew. She said, I'm a Samaritan. She said, you're a man and I'm a woman. Why are you asking me these questions? She, the Bible lets us know she had a messed up uh, relationship. She had been married five times. She was living with her boyfriend. And yet Jesus still said, give me to drink. If you're here today and you got excuses, I've come to rebuke the excuses. Get rid of them. All of them. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what your family dynamics are. I don't care how messed up your marriage is. I don't care how confused you are. Give Jesus praise. Give him worship. Give him glory. It's Sunday morning and Jesus wants a drink. I didn't come to wait till tonight to, to give God some praise. I didn't come to wait till the choir's cranking to shout. I came, he's thirsty, I've come to praise him. Somebody ought to stand to your feet, clap your hands and give him praise. Oh, kondada bakasataya, hallelujah. Come on, let a praise well out of your heart. Come on, let a worship emerge from your spirit. The psalmist said this, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. God saying, would you give me the drink? The psalmist said this, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. He's not saying, he's not, he, I know God blesses us and I know God refreshes us, but in certain times God is saying, I want to be blessed. I want to be praised. This is not just about Joel Booker. This ain't about whether or not my feet hurt and my arm hurts and my shoulder hurts. This is about that God has been good. And so the psalmist said, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen. You know what we're doing right now? We're giving him a drink. We're giving him praise. We're blessing the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There's a God that has come this Sunday morning. And yes, he has all power in heaven and in earth. And yes, he's going to heal people. How many know he's a healer? And yes, he's here to fill people with the Holy Ghost. How many know he's a savior? Yes, he's here to wash sins away. And if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. But can I tell you today that that same God has come and he's saying, what about me? He's not embarrassed to say it. He's saying, give me to drink. What about me? What about, are you gonna rush out of the building and try to get to the restaurant? Are you gonna run out of the building, make sure the roast doesn't burn in the cock, crock pots? Anybody still cook roast on a Sunday afternoon? Is he saying, or what? but he's saying today, somebody needs to wake up, Holy Ghost is here, and I'm thirsty. I have been the back end of jokes all week long. Is there somebody that'll praise me? This is the test, and if you need to be blessed, this is how it starts, by blessing the Lord for First, I've never seen it. There are very few people. I can't even think of anybody that's ever received the Holy Ghost that wasn't praising God when they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know why? God was saying, after you've repented, you believed on me. Faith is high. You need to praise me. It's time for you to pass the drink test. And if you pass the drink test, I will give you water that you'll never again thirst. I will give you living water. I will give you something that'll satisfy. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here to help somebody. There's, God's talking to a man right now. How long has it been since you just said, I love you, God? I love you, God. 
I love you, God. It's not all about the calisthenics. I know we do need to clap and jump and shout, but there ought to be something from the heart so sincere that says, God, I want to give you a drink today. God, I want to praise you today. And if that's how you feel, as they begin to, to play right now and as the church is praying, come on, somebody begin to pray right now. Somebody begin to pray right now. As they're playing and the church is praying, this altar is open. But it's open for somebody that will give the Lord what he's looking for. Give me the drink. Come on, sir. Why don't you lift your hands and praise him? Come on, ma'am. Why don't you come down to this altar and give the Lord a drink today? Come on, young person. Why don't you come to this altar and magnify Jesus? Oh, that's beautiful. Come on, if you're a guest here today, why don't you join us in this altar? Come on, sir. Why don't you join us? Lift your voice and give him praise right now. Oh, that's beautiful. Come on, there's room in this altar.